Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about uh, some very, very, very sensitive matters with my daughter that I really have not shared ever in public. And the reason why I'm sharing it only for one reason and that is for parents to take a look and see how things can turn completely around for their children depending on the environment that they are raised and the experiences that the kids face how they affect their decision as they grow up we should not be ashamed to talk about our own mistakes we should not be ashamed to talk about um, something you know we don't want to we don't want to backbite other my as I mentioned in my other episode and my purpose here is not to backbite someone defame someone and make somebody wrong it is all of this is observation okay so uh, as I mentioned uh, during my pregnancy with the second child actually both child I was very alone even though the husband was there, he was not very supportive. That's one thing I just want to, if, you're, if you happen to be a male a husband, uh, I just want to tell you, the woman already goes through a lot of hormonal changes. Already, if the husband is loving and caring, she's going to have ups and downs, emotions and moods. It's not that she wants to be this way. This happens, this is pretty normal. Um, you know, she has all kinds of issues happen. I mean, she is creating a baby in her womb. So, so many things happen that if I only realized this even more as I became more familiar with um, uh, prenatal issues, which I will have to talk about it another time. I spend a lot of time in, in, that, in that field. Anyhow, my issue was I gave this baby a loving care throughout the whole pregnancy. So when I, I was, and at the same time, I was really very sad because my husband wasn't there for me. He just was physically there, but he was emotionally not there for me. To a point where when I was eight months pregnant, I remembered, oh, he said I was a Muslim at some point. And I mean, it's not funny, I'm just saying it this way, um, it was a big sadness where I was so desperate, I wanted to connect, you know, with Allah, so I didn't know what to do. I had a lady living with me, Iranian lady, and she was a Muslim, she was praying all the time, I said, please teach me how to pray again. I used to pray a long time ago when I was a child, show me how to pray. So just to make the long story short, I started praying at that time 1983 but so I went praying but I, I I'm just praying because I want to get close to Allah I don't know what I'm saying I don't know the meaning of the words is that I have a desire to get close to Allah <clears throat> the only thing that I knew at the time was go ahead and pray so this was my initial touch putting my small foot <laughs> into the religion getting some kind of connection with Allah but I was not studying Islam or anything. This was just one small step. After the child was born, of course, um, we had many things happen and lost business. We moved, we moved to the uh, northern part of Los Angeles. We lost the health club, which my husband wanted to have, and he could not succeed in anything that he touched just because he didn't care enough. It was like it was not. He was not a bad man, you know. He just <laughs> liked to uh, play in the ocean and swim, and then basically read. He loves to research and anything. He. This was his personality, and I couldn't at the time. He wanted me to run the health club. I have a baby. I have a. I have a toddler. I. I could not, and at the same time, we find that my father had cancer. So I brought him to my house to take care of him. And I, my load was very, very heavy. And ended up that we sent my 
father to Taiwan, where my brother was uh, had a business there. He said, send him there because they have best hospitals there. It just so happened he passed away there. And he was, um, my daughter was born January 1984. My father passed away December of the same year, unfortunately. It was a very, very sad situation. So I ended up asking my husband for separation. I wanted to move up north because we had gone to Mount Shasta uh, once together and I, we had met some people. I felt uh, make, made a good connection with people. I feel very much um, love there and I felt like you know I'm kind of in new age process at this time and I felt like yeah these are the kind of people I like. I like nature. I wanted to go up north anyhow. So I asked for separation, but I also, I, I was not rude or anything. I was very kind with him. I said, just tell me what would work. Well, he suggested he would come with us, settle us down, and then after he's ready, he would move on. Fine, no problem. So at, um, if this was 1985, uh, we moved to Mount Shasta, and then a few months later, he moved to uh, Reading, a town uh, close by. I was in Mount Shasta for a year. I met many people. I, I, I had actually, the, and with my husband, I didn't ask for divorce. I still kept a ring in my hand because I did not want any man to have any kind of a, a attention on me because I just wanted to be with the kids. I didn't want my father, lost him. I didn't want to have anything with, with, with that. In, in despite all of that, I had three marriage offers the first year and I kept showing my hand I said look I'm a married woman so you cannot you cannot propose to me it's like this this issue of remarrying was completely uh, out of my question but this one man was a very kind man he said he would even um, adopt my kids put his name on the kids he just would take all of us I mean this was maybe would have been a good idea at the time but I I really Amazingly, I really still loved my husband. I always felt that no man ever will be a father for my kids like him. He's the father. And always I wished that he would wake up and saw what he lost and he would come to us after us and asking to take us back and I would run back just because he was the father. And I loved him, you know. So uh, I had no interest in any remarriage and kept waiting and waiting for any change and he was, you know, having relationship with other, you know, females. I'm, I'm not in the situation with him. Anyhow, eventually I decided after a year I would move to Hawaii. Why move to Hawaii? This was, <laughs> this was another incredible thing. My kids at that time were... Um, it's like one and a half and three and a half years old, something like this, under four years old. And this was an incredible process while we went there. Uh, I don't know how much of this, all of this to tell you, but inshallah I will tell you in the next episode, I don't want to make this very long, I will tell you about the Hawaii trip, Hawaii life, living in Hawaii, in the next episode. Thank you. Have a nice day. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.